darkness and light, earth and sky and all creation celebrate the wonder of Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter to all of you. It's so good to see all of you. I welcome all of you in person, those of you joining us on our stream. Um, what a great day for some great music. <laughs> That's what Easter's about. Um, let me just do a quick uh, announcement. They are in your bulletin. I won't go through all of them. I invite you to read through those. Uh, first of all, we have brunch. We have food for all of you. So as soon as service is over, come to Fellowship Hall and we'll have brunch uh, for all of you. So plan to stay as we continue to celebrate and, and for fellowship. Um, this Tuesday, our Mary Martha um, group, our circle, is um, going to be talking with a group called Rescue and Redeemed from Eau Claire. It's going to be a Zoom meeting, um, talking with them about their mission, their ministry of helping, supporting those with human trafficking. Um, if you'd like to be connected, you just got to get connected to Kathy Martin. If you don't know who that is, ask me, and then I'll point her out to you So to get connected. This Wednesday is our Open Door Bistro, our community meal. Um, so it'll start at 5.30. We're doing local foods, which means we're doing meatloaf. So what better thing than that? Fly High, uh, one of our small groups, is starting a new study this Friday at noon called Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith. Um, so um, join them. Uh, they meet every Friday um, at noon. Our other discipleship, our women's Bible study, will not be meeting this Tuesday. They'll be meeting the next Tuesday on the 9th. They're doing the book of Galatians. Then fly high is this Friday. Um, and then prayer breakfast is moved. So it's not this Thursday. It'll be the next second Thursday because I will not be here. Um, children and youth, remember, we, owe, we have our chapel time, except for today on Easter. Uh, instead, you have special bags and you have, we have our table over here. And then our youth group on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. So, also, um, church camp is coming up July 21st to 26th. I just want to keep that in front of all of you. Um, the ages 8 to 17, register on our website, um, ask questions of, of Yvonne. So, I do want to welcome all of you. Normally at this time I'd say, oh, go shake someone's hand. If you're online, I do invite you to greet one another if you're online. But I'm going to invite up Audra, and um, the Good News Singers have a special way you're going to say good morning to one another. So, I'm going to have you stand up because you can't do this seated. That is correct. So all of my singers or any young person at heart, come into the aisles. I have someone for the choir too. Come on, Mary. And we gotta get moving.
Thank you, good news singers. No, you gotta stay standing. We got our call to worship. <laughs> we should start worship every time. Let me invite up our liturgist. And then remain standing after this because we're gonna sing our special opening hymn. So. <laughs> Rejoice Alleluia. and sing. Alleluia. Be glad. Alleluia. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. So let's join in Christ the Lord is risen today, verses one, two, four, and five. be seated. Let us be in a time of prayer. Loving God, on this wondrous morning, shine your light into our lives. 
Help us to hear again your good news that changes hearts and lives. Open us to your resurrection power that knows no boundaries. Fill us with incredible joy, everlasting peace, and unquenchable hope this day and always. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected one. Amen. Let us continue on with the reading of Scripture for this morning. Now I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, then the twelve. Then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. 
for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you believed. Our gospel lesson for this Easter morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. Hear these words. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. 
May God add his blessing to our hearing and living out of the word this day. I want to invite up our, our good news singers, um, who's going to be sharing a special song, Lord of the Sunlight, along with some special pictures that they drew. All right. Wait, don't run away. We have young disciples. It can't be shut. Yeah. So this tomb was filled with love. So who wants to add some love? So it's red for love, just in case you're wondering why it's red. That's love, right? Like, like my heart. See? See? Red like the heart. But who wants to add some more love? Come grab some, grab some little hearts and put them in the tomb. Whoa, a little, okay. Just stick, there we go. Everybody get some love? Did you get some? Here, you want to add some love? That's all right. All right, we got a little bit more. Yeah, well. <laughs> all right, okay. Hello. <laughs> all right. All right, I'm going to put that heart on top, because that's going to seal the tomb, right? Now, we just said that it cannot. Yeah, this is a little science experiment. <laughs> so it's either going to be really cool, it's going to explode, or I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. It could be all three. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. That's science. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in case you're wondering, that's, that's baking soda and you had vinegar, so what you're looking at is a chemical reaction. Yes. It's creating water and carbon dioxide. But, but this is church, <laughs> right? So I got a deeper meaning, but the science is cool. This is why you got to pay attention in science class. It does. But what happened to our love? What did it do? Um, it just, what did it do? It exploded. Come on. What did it do? It exploded, right? <laughs> look at it. Right. Look at it. You got hearts all over. Right. So, so we know that the love of God can't be contained. So where is the love of God now? Where's now? Okay. Keep going. <laughs> That's true. But where else is it? Yeah, on earth, but where is it specifically? Where is it? In us. It's in us. So here's the question. Can the love of God be contained within us? No. Come on. Well, do not drink vinegar. <laughs> Let me be clear, everybody. I am not advocating chemicals. If you're going to do this experiment, do it with a grown-up. See, I should have said that in the beginning. Do it with the safety anyway. But the thing is, is we can't contain the love of God, right? It has to birth for, burst forth from us, right? And we have to share God's love. We have to make it real, right? Kind of unrelated. Is this just carbonated water? It's just carbonated water, yes. <laughs> so how are you going to do that? How are you going to share God's love? 
you're going to be kind, you're going to be compassionate, you're going to do a smile, you're going to share with people, you're going to listen to your parents and grandparents, you're going to clean your rooms without asking. Nope. Yes, you are, because <laughs> that's how we share love, right? So, and be respectful. Those are all great ways. So, I want, yeah. Be persevering, right? So I want you to know today, remember our little experiment. Love, God's love couldn't be contained in the tomb, and it can't be contained in us. So you need to go forward, and you need to share God's love. Share Jesus' love, okay? So, uh, yeah, but again, do not do any experiments without a grown-up present. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so let's say our prayer. <laughs> I'm glad it inspired you. <laughs> Go into chemistry. That's my plug. All right, we're going to pray, and we're going to do an echo prayer. So everybody in the sanctuary, repeat after me. Amazing God, thank you for this wondrous day. Thank you for the resurrection. That changes everything. That changes us. Let your joy, your hope, your love, flow out from us to touch and transform this world. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you can return to your seat doing your special bit. Thank you, Madeline. Madeline is my cleanup crew for this morning. <laughs> all right. Oh. 
right. Amen. Amen, choir. All right, I'm going to start by doing something a little bit different. We're going to start with a song. Um, it's called Because He Lives, titled my message. This is on the PowerPoint. We're just going to sing the first verse. So you can either turn to him 364 in the red hymnal or it'll be on the PowerPoint. Let's sing verse 1, Because He Lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know Life is worth the living just because he lives. This hymn that we started to sing was written in 1971. It's over 50 plus years ago by Gloria and Bill Gaither. You might know the name Gaither, very famous in the music world. It's consistently one of the most popular hymns, especially at this time of year, to sing. But the hymn was written at a very, very difficult time, a difficult time in the life of the Gaithers and a very difficult time in the life of our country that was surrounding them. 1971 was a time when we were a very, very, very divided people. There was a lot going on. If you're old enough to remember, you might remember 1971, we were in the middle of the Vietnam War, a very bloody war. Anti-war protests dominated the news almost every day. Our country had ended the last decade of the 60s with major assassinations of our political leaders and our civil rights leaders, and we were in the midst of a very hard, difficult um, conversation and struggle, which we're still having about race and about equality. But it was also a time when many people were working and striving for a better, more peaceful future for all our children. So it was in this uncertain time, both uncertain in the midst of the Gaithers who were going through some medical issues and personal troubles, the uncertainty of what was going on in the world around them, that they were getting ready to welcome their son into the world. And so to, in the midst of all of that, they sat down and they wrote this hymn that we're going to sing, that we sang the first verse of. They wrote this hymn of faith and of new life. The very first verse that we just got done singing says to us how Jesus came to love and heal and forgive. He lived and died. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. So we heard in our reading, just a little, little bit ago in Mark, how Mary Magdalene was coming to the tomb that early Easter morning with a couple other women. And Mary Magdalene is a really interesting woman. She gets included in all the resurrection stories. Um, Mary Magdalene met Jesus during a really, really, really hard, difficult time in her life. She was very sick, she was very tormented, and Jesus touched her and he healed her. And she became one of his most devoted followers. She was with Jesus when he arrived in Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna. She was in the crowd when they were shouting to crucify him. She was along the route when Jesus was struggling to carry his cross. And when the disciples fled in fear, it was Mary and the women, a few other women, who stayed and was there when Jesus died on the cross. And in that moment, you know, all her hopes, all her dreams kind of died on that cross. So Mary's now coming. It's early Sunday morning. She's coming with two other women with their spices. The dew is still fresh um, on that early Sunday morning. And as we sang in this very first verse about the empty tomb, we know that Mary also represents us. She represents us when we go through those really difficult, those really hard, those really challenging times when it seems like the world is a very dark and hard place. Because we too know those days, right? 
We know those days of grief. We know those days of feeling lost. Lost when just darkness weighs on our souls. You know, these are the days when you, the day after, um, a diagnosis of a really tough illness. Um, the day after a relationship ends, uh, leaving your life and heart in tatters. It's the day after the person you shared your, your life with, you loved the most, your best friend, dies. And now it's the day after. Um, it's the day after you lose your job. It's the day, um, the, the day when the world seems so bleak that hope is seemingly nowhere to be found. It's the day when we struggle with attacks and violence on innocence. It's a day when God seems to be absent. This is what's happening to Mary Magdalene as she's coming to that tomb this morning. And then she approaches the tomb. She's lost in grief. And then she's astonished to find that the stone has been rolled away. So her first thought was not, wow, wow, gee, there's a resurrection, right? Um, people didn't rise from the dead anymore um, back then than they, than they do today. And so Mary is actually approaching the tomb incredibly irritated. What more could possibly happen? First they kill him, and now they desecrate his tomb. But then, but then Mary hears a voice of hope. Join me in singing verse 2 of Because He Lives. How sweet to hold a, a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know Just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby. As the Gaithers were working on this hymn, as I told you, they're waiting for the birth of their child, thinking about the future. So I can remember before I had kids, I didn't seem to think about the future all that much. Now, I might have thought about the future, but only how it related to me. I can assure you I didn't think about how the future related to any other living person. It was all about me. And all of a sudden, I became a dad. And here's this little person totally dependent on me and my wife. And from there, my mind began racing, starting small and sort of expanding. So this is how my mind went. Um, it was, oh my goodness, this little one needs so much. How am I ever going to provide for them for their entire life? Like, this isn't just a day. Like, this is forever, right? And then it was, oh my goodness, the house is a death trap. How are they ever going to survive, right? Um, you just heard the children's sermon. They're, what they're taking away is, let's go drink vinegar, right? Oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? Um, what happens when they go out in the world? How am I going to protect them 24-7 all the time? What kind of future am I creating? Oh my goodness, the world... What's going on with the world? What kind of world am I leaving behind? So you can see how it just balloons, right? Um, and you know, I don't know any parent or grandparent or aunt or uncle or anybody um, who doesn't worry about the future when they look at children. But there's hope. At the tomb, Mary hears the voice of the angel proclaiming, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. And so we boldly proclaim on this glorious day, Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Right? And that's good news. That's great news. That's why we're here. Because the resurrection confirms the promises of hope um, that Jesus spoke to his disciples. Right? Jesus is risen. means that the worst thing is never the last thing. It means that death is never God's last word. The hope of the resurrection is what Paul proclaimed when he writes, Where, O death, is your sting? 
Where, O death, is your victory? For death has been swallowed up in victory. Paul couldn't have ever written those words if it wasn't for the resurrection. So yes, Jesus is risen. It's wonderful, good, glorious news. But I want to say to you this morning, we need to go deeper. Because yes, Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen for me. Jesus is risen for each of you. Jesus is risen for everyone. Jesus' love, like you saw with the kids, pours out on us, no matter who we are, no matter what we have done. We are not abandoned. We are seen. We are known. We are heard. And this means everything. You see, the resurrection changes how we face life. So if we're struggling this morning, if anybody is here and you're struggling this morning with health issues, relationship issues, just struggling in whatever way, maybe a loved one is hurting, you're not going to leave here and your circumstance will change immediately and instantly, right? But what the resurrection does is it changes our perspective. And that change makes all the difference in how we face and how we move through life in a world creating and leaving a legacy behind for all of our children. Isn't that what we just sang? How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because he lives. For on this day we're reminded once again that this hope surrounds us from the time we're born all the way to the end. So I want to invite you to sing with me the last verse of Because He Lives. And then one day I'll cross the river I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as death gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory and I know he reigns because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I So even when we face the end of our days, we are so loved that when we fight life's final war with pain, we will see the lights of glory and know he reigns. But this good news is for all the endings of our life, not just our final one. Bill and Gloria made it clear that this verse was to be seen in a much more expansive way, that every time we make a change, every time we take a different direction, every time we start a new chapter in life, we can trust and rely on a strength and a power and a love that is with us in our endings and all our new beginnings. You see, I've been with people who have thought that their life was over, wasn't worth living anymore. It was over. Who could only see the negative. Brick by brick, they built walls of guilt and regret and hurt and pain, and that's all they saw. But like all of us, they are not abandoned there. The light and love of what Jesus did on the cross and through the empty tomb breaks down walls, opens closed doors, moves rocks from tombs. I've seen too many lives touched, too many lives turned around, not to believe and know that in Christ alone there is new possibilities and there is resurrection. That's why I love how the Gospel of Mark in the, that we read this morning doesn't, doesn't really end, right? It says to us, Jesus has gone on ahead of you, and then it ends with these words that the women were afraid, right? The women were terrified. That was the last word we read. In Greek, that word um, afraid or terrified can be translated as amazed, excited, astonished. And then it ends. Now, if you read your Bible at home, you'll see there's um, a, another ending of Mark, and then there's a, long, there's a short ending of Mark and a long ending. That was tacked on after. The original ending of Mark, that's how it ends. They were afraid, amazed, terrified, 
excited. Um, the most important story of our faith, and it just ends. It just is hanging out there, and we're just left waiting, and it's unresolved. But I think that's the whole point. This story doesn't have an end, not yet. The story of Mark's gospel doesn't end because it isn't over. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Jesus is out of the tomb, going on ahead of us, calling us to follow. And we are left with the same decision that those first disciples have at the midst of this news, on hearing the news that Jesus is risen. Are we going to follow or are we going to desert? Are we going to be ruled by faith or are we going to let fear control us? Are we going to believe or are we just going to misunderstand? The choice is ours. Because Easter isn't about death. It isn't about defeat or despair. It's about life. It's about new life. So once there was a church located near a park where there were more homeless people than people playing, where drugs were sold, where gunshots were more common than the sound of laughter, and the people were scared. And they felt like their neighborhood was gone, their homes were gone, and many of them wanted to move. They wanted to move the church. And so they came together as a community to pray and talk. And in their conversation, one brave man, he stood up and he said, I've lived in this neighborhood my whole life and I'm not willing to be pushed out. And he urged everyone to push back with love, to push back with hope, to push back with peace. And so with some fresh paint, some cleaning supplies, and a lot of faith, and a lot of prayer, and a lot of trust in God, they rehabilitated, they renewed the park. In time, families came back, the sound of children was heard again, but they didn't stop there, they kept going. They used the sacred space of the park and began to reach out to the drug addicts and the homeless and offer them job training and recovery services, a hand up, um, and, and another way out of their situation. They didn't condemn anybody, but they welcomed all to this place where healing and hope could transform hearts and lives. This is the work and the mission of resurrection, of what means to be Easter people, because it's the future that matters. It's hope that matters. It's faith that matters. So what is in front of us that needs to be renewed this day? I invite you to think about that. Who are the people that God has put in your life right now? Who are the people that are in your life right now that need to be heard, that need to be seen, that need to know that they matter? Where can we bring renewal in the midst of where we are? You know, here in this congregation, we do that. We reach out to the poor, right, through one big tent, interfaith food pantry, to the hungry, right? A lot of great, great ways, but there's a lot of simple ways, right? You could drop off a meal. You could go grocery shopping for someone who can't go. You could write a note to someone. You could give a phone call. There's any number of ways you can reach out to renew and restore the world around us, to spread kindness and compassion and love and justice. Even in a hard and a difficult place that we sometimes find ourselves in, our light shines the brightest because of the hope of the resurrection. And so I have people from time to time and they'll say to me, do you really believe this stuff? You seem like a smart guy. That's always nice to hear, right? You seem like a smart guy, but do you, really, do you really in your heart and soul believe that Jesus rose from the dead? And my response is, is always the same. I not only believe it, I'm counting on it. I'm counting on the fact that there is always hope. I'm counting on the fact that God walks with us through the most hurtful, the most painful times of life right through to the other side. I'm counting on the fact that the worst thing is never the last thing. I'm counting on the fact that God forgives us and gives us the strength then to forgive others. That we always have a second and a third and a fourth and however many chances we need in life through the gift of grace. Because he lives, our faith has power. Our lives are transformed. And we have part of a larger mission and we have deeper purpose and meaning in our lives. Because he lives, heaven and earth have touched. And we're now being sent forth. We're being called to go forth to bring a little bit of heaven onto the earth. For Jesus has walked in our footsteps, and now he calls us to walk in his. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen today. I hope on this glorious Easter morning you will take that message with you. That's what you're going to live out every day that you are blessed to live as Christ lives in you. The story is not finished because Jesus is still at work in the world and our lives. And he is ahead of us 
calling us to join him. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living because he lives. So let's come filled with joy. Let's boldly proclaim, Alleluia! Alleluia! He lives. Let's stand and reply and respond. He lives. Let's sing it. Hymn 310. He lives. So because he lives, our prayers have purpose and power, and so let us be a people of prayer to share our joys, our concerns uh, for this morning. I'll share uh, some prayers from this morning. I invite you to share prayers. If you're watching us um, online, I invite you to use the comment section at this time. Um, put in any prayers that you have, any joys or concerns that you have, and we will share those. So we had um, continued prayers. Uh, Mary Stanky is here. It's continued prayers for Annette, right? continue prayers, and then for Cheryl also, um, who are having some health issues. Um, Bruce and Wendy Miller are sending some thanks um, for the successful heart procedure and just continued prayers for health. Um, continue to pray for Al and Mary with their health challenges. Continued prayers for Larry's brother recovering from a stroke. Continued prayers for uh, Lynn's cousin, Gary. Um, 
with lymphoma and radiation and health struggles that she's going through. Um, continued prayers for Kay, who uh, went in for knee replacement and has some bleeding. And then also some prayers of healing for Dennis, who um, had, a, had a bit of an accident and broke some ribs, and so prayers of healing uh, for, for Dennis uh, this, this morning. And then, of course, prayers of peace. Prayers are persistent prayer of peace for Israel, for Palestine, Ukraine, the Congo. Um, and then I will share this on, online if anybody has others. Um, all right, so from Carol, prayers for Mary, who is battling cancer. Um, and so prayers for Mary, uh, Mary P., who's battling cancer. So we pray for her. From Joseph, um, watching in, in Ghana, <laughs> he responded. He wanted to let us know this joy that he is watching us live from Arawa, Ghana, uh, which he does from the orphanage that you all help build and open. And so he's just, he wanted to just lift up a joy for, um, of course, Dr. John, right? <laughs> Dr. John Munson, and for Sue and Lewis, and, uh, and for Barb. And also the church choir, who he's particularly touched by this morning. So those were his joys. Um, and so that's a great joy. If others are watching online and you want to lift up a prayer, just type that in. But how about those of you that are here in person? Do you have joys, concerns? This would be our time to share any prayers that you might have that you want to share with one another. And if you don't, that's okay too. <laughs> I see one over here. <laughs> Today is my husband's birthday. Hey, happy birthday. All right, birthday blessings. All right. What a great day for a birthday. <laughs> Other uh, prayers. So down here, Tom. Oh, Mary. Oh, here. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to tell me, to look back? <laughs> I forget there's a choir behind me. They don't often. <laughs> I'd like to ask for prayers for my friends and neighbors um, whose 95 year old grandmother and great grandmother, Ruby, is in the hospital this Easter and won't be there to share the Easter celebration with her family. And. Um, prayers for Ruby and her family. All right. Prayers for Ruby and her family. Thank you. Now down in front. <laughs> Wave your hand. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, I have a prayer request for Ken's uh, service uh, buddy who, and friend, longtime friend who had uh, surgery a month ago um, with uh, on his heart uh, so um, on the 9th they're going to St. Louis uh, to see the radiologist or rheumatologist I'm sorry and to uh, see uh, they can put him on steroids to prevent the blockage to his temporal arteries and may lead to blindness without treatment all right. So we want prayers for them. Prayers for them. Any other? All right. With the prayers that have been named and spoken, those that are unheard, that are within us, I invite us to come. Let all our prayers be bound together. Let's be a people of prayer. We thank you, O God of great love, for the gift of life on this wondrous, joyous Easter morning. When we face tombs of darkness and despair, may we stop and listen and hear the voice of Jesus say, Do not be afraid, for I am with you even to the end of the age. Let the resurrection resound throughout our community that because Christ lives, we live in the fullness of your joy and life as we lift up our prayers to you this day, knowing we can trust in your promises that you are always with us. Let us, let us trust in your hope as we let the power of the resurrection resound as we pray for those who are struggling this day, we want to pray for any and all who are struggling with whatever medical issue they have, with injuries, with illness. Um, we want to pray for your healing presence to be with them. For those who have lost loved ones whose hearts are heavy, 
and I pray that they are filled with your comfort and with your peace. Oh, Lord, for all those that are struggling in whatever way, with poverty, with homelessness, with addiction, with mental illness, living in places or situations of violence, oh, Lord, be with them. Open our eyes and our hands that we see our mission to let your joy and love flow from us to be with them. For that is what is exactly happening this day, as your love overflows from us, as we lift up to you our praises, um, our praises of celebrations, of birthdays, of the, of the joy of our family, of friends that are with us, the joy of our church family that prays with us, the joy of this gorgeous world and the sunshine, the joy of your Son who has died our death and risen for our sake. May our hallelujahs echo in our hearts as we join you at work already in our world, renewing our world. Let us continue to bring your renewing love, your mighty justice, your endless hope, your amazing grace into all the areas of our lives. With unbridled gratitude, let us pray together in the name of Jesus, the promised one, our risen Lord. So we pray that prayer, that guiding prayer that connects us. So wherever we are gathered for worship, let us join with one heart and one voice. Pray with me, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now our next special music. is finished he said we had watched as his life ebbed away and we all stood around till the guards took him down Joseph begged for his body that day it was late afternoon when we got to the tomb, wrapped his body and sealed up the grave. But I know how you feel, his death was so real. Oh, please listen and hear what I say. I've just seen. Sing Jesus, our precious Lord alive, and I knew He really saw me too. i 
his voice she first heard those kind and gentle words asking what was her reason for tears and I sobbed in despair my Lord is not there he said child it is I I am he Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we come now to the time of our service to recognize our blessings and to give back. And because you give, you support the Wonders Music Ministry that has blessed us this morning. And because you give, you support our mission, our ministry that allows us to reach out um, with our resurrection power to reform and renew and restore the community around us. So thank you for all the ways you've given. This morning, the offering will be collected as you leave the sanctuary. There's two plates out there. I invite you to place your Easter offering in one of those or mail it into the church or use our website, stevenspointumc.org, with the Give button that's at the bottom to do that. So thank you for all those ways you've given and for this opportunity we're given to give back. I invite us to pray. Oh God, we come as a thankful people, thankful for our many, many blessings, thankful for Jesus who whose resurrection inspires us with his call to new life, compassion, and greater generosity, his call to love, to love God and our neighbor. And we give thanks for this opportunity to give and to share, to make a difference as we live that love out, as we share our time, our talents, our treasures, and support our ministries that touch and transform this world. Bless our giving. Bless our sharing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to stand for our closing hymn. Up from the grave he arose.
And so may all the joy, all the excitement of this day go with us. May the power of Christ's resurrection go with us. May the good news of this wondrous day go with us. May the promise and the hope of Easter go with us. Let us go in peace to sing, to pray, to love, to serve, all for the glory of God. And as you head to the brunch, I pray my blessing on that food. May it nourish you body and soul that you continue to be servants of this greater love. Go in peace as we end our service with our postlude.